Hi, welcome to Climbing Daily. A few days ago, we were rock climbing with Katie Whitaker and Mina Leslie Wajastic, and while we were at it, we thought we'd ask him about all things female climbing. Hi, I'm Katie Whitaker. I'm from Sheffield in the UK, um, and I am a sport and trad climber. Hi, my name's Mina Leslie Viastic. I'm also from Sheffield in the UK, and I'm predominantly a boulderer and sport climber. I think it's a hot topic at the moment, I guess, because there's been a bit of an explosion of more women doing impressive stuff. Like, there's been girls bouldering AB+, women climbing 9A, 9A+, you know, like, there's a lot of achievement going on at the moment in the realm of women's climbing, so I guess it's just getting a lot of attention. Yeah, I think it can only be a good thing. I think in any sport or any arena where there's been a minority, and there still is a minority in terms of the uh, gender difference with women and men in climbing, then if uh, that minority group gets attention and support and encouragement um, and recognition, then that's great. As long as it's all positive, I think it's, it's, it's a good thing. Um, I think, I mean, climbing with Mina, because we're of a similar ability, although I mean it's a bit better, but it means I can, um, you know, we can share beta, we can share um, information about the climb, we can talk about, you know, like if we're getting scared or, or you know, things about, yeah. things about that which you wouldn't necessarily talk about guys with, because guys are just like, oh yeah, we don't get scared. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's pretty strong at the moment. I mean, there's us climbing, there's like Emma Twyford doing quite a bit. Um, Hazel is obviously, um, has obviously done a lot in the past. She's injured at the moment. She's recovering from an operation, so it's a little bit quiet from her at the moment. Um, and then obviously we've got Shauna Coxie on the competition, world competition circuit. And there's quite a few strong youngsters coming through as well, so hopefully we'll see more and more from them. I think though, not only is it improving in the professional climbers though, even like the people that are getting out at weekends that have full-time jobs are like knocking off 8As, 8A pluses at weekends, which used to be big news, and now they're just like crushing it at the weekend, which is like, which is so good to see. Mm. Yeah, it's definitely like um, a lot more women coming into the sport, at least it's visible very much at the walls, especially in the UK, I mean I'm sure it's same in other countries as well, but there's a really visible difference in terms of the ratio of men to women at the climbing wall, at the crags, at the weekends. And that's kind of, the, I guess, probably the most important part, really. But like, when I started climbing, I was the only girl that was really regular at my wall. It was just me and a bunch of guys. I'd say now it's like 60, 40, 70, 30. It men definitely to women. is in the wall, isn't it? In the walls, definitely. At the crag, it's probably still more to the 70, 30 end of things. I have not noticed it with the people that I climb with. It's just, they're the people get, that I go climbing with and it doesn't matter whether they're men or women, it's, it's always been the same. Um, I'm not sure about public opinion. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I agree with Katie, like with the people you climb with, the people you know, like it it's, doesn't really change. I guess with people you don't know, sometimes there's less um, assumptions made about your ability based on your gender. So sometimes, if you don't know people, you mm. go to the crag, they don't necessarily say anything, you know, no one's ever malicious, I think climbing is like a really inclusive, supportive community, but sometimes when you start on a harder route or start trying the move on something harder, you can sense, the, you notice looks of surprise, and you don't, and I certainly don't get that as much now. It's kind of more kind of run of the mill for girls to rock up and get on hard routes, whereas in the past, perhaps, there'd be an element of people being like, oh, right, oh, okay. I think we spent a lot of time last October uh, climbing at Raven Tour. Um, I've not been climbing as much recently, so I've, I've not been out with Mina, but I was trying uh, Mecca, and then Mina was trying Mecca Extension. So, and obviously, because Mina had already climbed Mecca, then it was, yeah, it was so good having her there because, yeah, you were like giving me all the, all the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> So we're around for most of the summer, um, 
I'll probably do a bit of trad climbing and do some training. Um, and then in September, mid-September, we're going to go to um, South Africa. So we're going to go out to um, Waterfall Boven and another area called Wow Prow. So we have that booked, so we're definitely going there. And then hopefully after that, we might go out to Red River Gorge for a few weeks. And then maybe India after that to an area called Badami. Yeah, we're pretty mm. psyched. Um, I think as well, we were both keen to go on like trips that felt like sport climbing trips, but also kind of slightly adventurous trips to places we hadn't been for a bit further afield. You know, it's, it's very tempting to just, you know, go to France, go to Spain. There's amazing sport climbing on the continent, but we're like, well, maybe this is the time to like interweave some adventure going to mm. a bit further out places. Um, yeah. And we both got free time, so we yeah. were like, let's go together. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks Mina and Katie and have a great trip to South Africa. That's it for this week, but join us on Monday when we will have all the action and reaction from the latest round of the IFSC Boulder World Cup. We'll see you then.